Hi, this is Steve Purcell on behalf of Tweeg. We're a distributed software lab and consultancy doing all kinds of interesting things at the intersection of research and industry. You should check us out at tweeg.io. I'm going to show you some nice tooling we've been working on which can help you with your Python projects. It uses Nix. If you don't know Nix, that's okay. Perhaps this will pique your interest. So as a starting point, I have a simple Python application. This is a Flask web application which when it starts up, uses the requests library to fetch an image from the internet. Then it uses the pillow library to resize that image to a smaller version. And then when you visit the slash image URI, you should get the smaller version of that. Let's try running that here on my Mac. I have a Python installed, but it's the system wide one. And it doesn't have the flask module installed and I don't want to install these um, dependencies system-wide. What a Python programmer would normally do at this point would be use a virtual env, but instead I'm going to use um, the poetry tool which manages that for us along with resolving dependencies and having um, an installable description of the project. So I also don't have poetry installed. I'd like to install that just for use within this project. I'm going to create a shell.nix file So it has some packages which by default come from the system-wide installation if they're not passed in. And I would like to have Python and Poetry av available in here. When I run Nix shell inside it I can see there's a Poetry installed. But this is bash and I'd really rather work for my normal shell environment. So I'm going to use durenv to give me that integration. I'm going to tell durenv to use nix. And now it uses the information from the nix environment to populate environment variables, including path in my host shell, such that poetry and Python 3 are the ones that have been installed via Nix. If I pop out of this directory, I'm back to my system Python, pop back into it, I'm there as before. So that's quite handy. Let's create an empty poetry project, non-interactively, called image app to match the Python module name. And let's add some dependencies. Poetry creates a virtual env for us. It creates a pyproject.toml manifest file for the project. And it also saves the exact version of all of the mutually compatible dependencies it resolved into a lock file so that they can be reinstalled later. I'm going to tell Poetry that we have a script called image app, which is the main function in the image app module. Now I can say Poetry run image app to run my script inside the virtual env with the dependencies and Flask starts happily. Let's make a request. Hello Rick. So that's working. Now to be able to install this on a server and have it coexist happily with perhaps other Python projects, we would need to think about writing wrapper scripts or perhaps even making Docker containers. Let's see how Nix can help us with that. I'm going to make a default.nix file. to use the poetry to Nix facility, which was created by my colleague Adam. I'm 
and what this does is translate the poetry lock file into a set of Nix installed packages. Fantastic. Now I've been given a result symlink to the actual location inside the Nix store directory where everything has been built. And if I look at result bin image app, this is a handy wrapper script which runs the program for me. Oops. And Nix knows about all of the system dependencies for that, as well as the Python version and the Python libraries. Let's run that. And I get the same result as before. Now this doesn't use a virtual env, this is just a packaged up script with a specific Python interpreter that only has those necessary packages installed into it. The nice thing about this is we can use the various Nix facilities um, for more conveniently working in a team or um, across multiple machines. So we have access to things like binary caches for shared builds, or we could deploy the entire dependency tree you just saw to remote machines using NixOps and then switch between one of those trees and another atomically as you upgrade your application. But we can also make a Docker image. I'm going to make a different version now of the default.nix. And I have one that I saved from earlier. This is slightly more complicated. Here I use an overlay to add our program using Make Poetry Application, as we saw before, to the overall set of packages that are known to, to Nix. I have one particular set of packages here, and then I have another set of packages for which I've overridden the target system to be Linux. Now remember I'm on a Mac here, and if I ask Nix to build me a Docker image, I would really like it to contain Linux binaries and not Darwin um, Mac binaries. So to do that, I can use the Docker tools package and using the host packages, I'm going to build a script which when I run it will produce the Docker image. And inside the Docker image, I would like there to be the Linux packages build of my new custom Flask application package. So now if I say Nix build the attribute docker from this set of two att attributes over here, let's see what happens. Oh. I didn't save it. Now some magic happens and our build is shipped off to a machine that knows how to build for Linux. This uses the, the brand new nixbuild.net service, which you should definitely check out if you're interested in Nix. Now the latest build result is a script which, when you run it, copies the various remotely built Linux build artifacts um, on the fly into a Docker image, which it then outputs on standard output. I can load that into my local Docker daemon using docker load.
So we even have multiple layers to get some degree of reuse. Now let's run that Docker image. Going to expose its port. And there is our Linux binary running inside Docker on my Mac. Let's try making that request one more time. And there we go. So I hope that's been an interesting demo of some of the handy things that you can do using Nix. I definitely encourage you to check out uh, more information at nixos.org. And of course, don't forget to visit the Tweak website and read some of the articles about what we've been doing. Thanks very much for checking in.